Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to St. Elizabeth Parish. I want to welcome all of our visitors and guests especially, and uh, Mary Louise and Jack Farley are visiting today, so thank you for celebrating with us. We appreciate your presence. Our religious ed children and families are having a, um, a Lenten service in the St. E Center. That's why they're not present with us today. They're actually having an extended class with the explanation of um, the, the Holy Week services, so we keep them in our prayers as well. These are some announcements. First with Kevin, um, the, the uh, sound guy for both the parish and the school. He has been able to secure two um, listening devices for people who have difficulty hearing or struggle with hearing problems. We now have two devices, and Barbara, you're using one of them. She's using one. So we'll have them available at all the masses. You can use them. We'll bring them back. We'll sanitize them for the next mass. So Kevin, thank you for doing that for us. We appreciate that. We are going to uh, continue a tradition on Holy Thursday night of visiting the city parishes. We have one of the vans of our school. If you'd like to participate after the Holy um, Thursday service in the evening to visit the beautiful churches here, there is a sign-up sheet in front of the canter stand. The Little Sisters of the Poor asked us to make an announcement at all the churches this weekend. They are wanting to bring young people into contact with the Little Sisters of the Poor for men and women ages 18 to 35. Every last Tuesday of the month, they're going to have a Eucharistic Holy Hour for that age bracket of young people seeking a more deep relationship with the Lord. And it is on our Facebook page, and you could see the more details about that. Also, Deacon Ken is the chaplain for the Legion of Mary. If anyone would like to join that organization, you can see Deacon Ken after Mass as we continue to form that group here in our parish. And our Columbiettes are here today. They're having their annual quiche sale that they do at various parishes. This is now their home base, so it's here. And for their works of charity that they do in conjunction with the Knights, but on their own as well as Columbiettes. So we hope that you would purchase um, one of the, the pies or one of the um, souffles that they have, and you can bring them to your Sunday dinners with your family. So thank you for listening to these um, important announcements about the life of our parish. We are live streaming, and Joe Papilli is there with young Michael, who is learning each Sunday how to run the cameras for us. So we appreciate that and we welcome all who are praying and watching on our social media platforms. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to St. Elizabeth Church. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Father Roger, and his intentions during this liturgy are for Joseph and Franziska Ernst and Mary Pacioli. You can find the entrance antiphon for today in the worship aids in the pew. Grant me justice, please. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Tweet. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although your body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also. Through his spirit, dwelling in you, the word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a man ill, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sister sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. So the sister sent word to Jesus saying, Master, sorry, when Jesus heard this, he said, the illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of, Man, the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. Then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus said to his fellow disciples, let us also go and die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is to come into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly saying, the, teach, the teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews were with her in the house comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was, a, it was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. 
Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you, are all, you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. And Kevin, Kevin Scott, could you do me a favor, please? Could you assist her in, um, in turning down the volume, the volume on her phone? Okay, so good morning, everyone. Now we're in the, uh, the, fifth, the fifth Sunday of Lent on this beautiful, beautiful day, beautiful, glorious day. Not a cloud is in the, is in the sky and the sun is burning brightly. The temperatures are warming and, and the trees are starting to bloom and the grass is blooming. And, and of course, with all of that, everyone's spring allergies begin as well, including mine. Well, our readings for this fifth Sunday of Lent continue God's love story to us on the final steps of his journey to Jerusalem to be crucified. Over the past three weeks, our Gospels have demonstrated God's merciful and redemptive love for us. If you recall, just two weeks ago, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at the well. He heals her of her thirst for earthly water with himself as living water that will never dry. She will never thirst again if she, takes, if she receives his living water. She and many, of her town, many in her town were converted. In last week's gospel, our Lord cures the blindness of the man with mud and spittle. The man was cured and set free despite, in spite of the anger created by Jesus for curing the man on the Sabbath. They were about to stone him and Jesus and his disciples moved to the, opposite, to the other side of the Jordan River. In today's readings, we hear the story of the, of the prophet Ezekiel's prophecy of the dry bones in the desert. It's called the Oracle of the Dry Bones. Ezekiel's prophecy provided hope for the people of Israel that God would restore them and their livelihood following their exile for being disobedient to God's will. Ezekiel's prophecy points to Jesus. It points to Jesus and the resurrection. And in his letter to the Romans, St. Paul reminds us to stay focused on Christ, stay focused on the spirit of Christ, the spirit that rose him from the dead because that same spirit will, rise, will raise us from the dead as well. So he tells us to stay focused on Christ and not be consumed by matters of the flesh. In today's gospel, Jesus receives word that his friend Lazarus is sick and near death. And Mary and Martha, they're struggling they're struggling with, with the fact that their brother is about to die, as, as any family, loving family member would. And they want Jesus to return and to heal their brother Lazarus, who is also his good friend. They knew and they've seen where Jesus has cured the sick, and they wanted Jesus to come immediately to cure their brother. Well, Jesus does not immediately respond to Martha and Mary's plea, but he decides to wait. He decides to wait. So why did Jesus wait? Why did he wait? Well, the players in today's gospel, they're struggling to understand who Jesus really is. 
he waits until Lazarus is dead before heading back across the Jordan to Bethany. And when he got there, Mary and Martha, they fell to his feet and they professed their belief in the resurrection. They said the words that they believe in the resurrection, but they have not yet come to understand that Jesus, that Jesus himself is the resurrection. Jesus was both saddened and perturbed that his best friends, Martha and Mary, who knew him extremely well, lacked, still lacked an understanding of who he really was. So Jesus waited because he wanted to use this opportunity, this final opportunity, to reveal his divinity and glorify God once again before taking those final steps, which is only about a mile away from where he was, the final steps to Jerusalem to undertake his passion. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead and restores his health. And knowing that Lazarus must die again, so again, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead so that he could continue his earthly life. Jesus knows that Lazarus must die again, and his actions foretell the final resurrection to eternal life. That resurrection that we will all experience on the last day. My friends, we face many challenges in our lives today, and we can identify with the players in today's gospel. Sometimes we're like Martha and Mary, speaking words of anguish and despair. Now we're like that sometimes. Sometimes we're like Lazarus in the tomb, bound and tied in knots due to an illness, due to financial struggles or problems in a relationship that may seem unsolvable. And sometimes we're like the crowd, the crowd that was watching from the sidelines and not being present to one another. You know, oftentimes, we want immediate action from, our, from the Lord that we love, just like Martha and Mary. However, we lack the ability as human beings to fully comprehend his timing and his ways. We don't understand it because, because we're human, we're not divine. We don't know his ways, God's ways are not always our ways. His timing is not always our timing. But we will find out one day. We will understand that one day when we are in heaven with him and we are glorified with Jesus in the resurrection. So we'll find out one day, just not now. So with all of that, with the struggles that we sometimes go through, we cry out sometimes. We cry out, and we cry out asking our Lord, is he waiting? Is he waiting to act in our struggles? Is he waiting just as he waited for Lazarus to die? Is he waiting in our personal struggles? Well, the answer is no. Our Lord is always in control, and our Lord is always there to lead us through our periods of struggle with compassion and love. You know, we pray for miracles, especially with, with serious illnesses that we or our family members may have. We pray for miracles, but most of the time, God's actions are seen in different ways. For example, we see God's action in those who comfort us, those who comfort us when we are troubled. That comfort may come in, in, in a simple form as a, as a kind word, or a phone call, or a visit, or a hug, or maybe just even a smile. Those simple gestures provide God's light to us in our moment of despair. Not unlike what Jesus provided the Samaritan woman at the well, or his heartfelt and tearful comforting of Mary and Martha at Lazarus' grave. And we too, we too are called to be present for others and not just become bystanders. You know, we can all relate to this. And I can relate to this personally myself with, with my family. You know, my daughter, my oldest daughter, I was diagnosed with lymphoma, you know, just a few, few short weeks ago. You know, and she and, and our family, you know, we're, we're going through, going through the process of getting her getting her the necessary treatment that, that she needs. That lymphoma is curable, 
But as you know, as, as parents, anything that's happening you know, to your children, you feel it. You feel it deep, deep inside, and you, and you, and you worry. You, know, you worry, just like, just like Martha, and Martha and Mary. I know that's the case, the case with, with my family. So I ask you for your prayers, you know, to lift my daughter Angela you know, up in prayer, and, and also to pray for the, the physicians, the doctors and the nurses that are treating her, that they be given God's wisdom to come up with, with treatment plans and, and, and the support that she needs to be restored back to, to full health. So we're all called to be present to others, and again, and not just be bystanders. In a few moments, we will come to the table of God's grace to experience the miracle, the miracle. Miracles happen at this altar in this church every Sunday when we come to Mass. The miracle occurs at the altar when the bread and wine is changed into the real presence of the body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. And we, by faith, we come forward to receive the Eucharist knowing that we're receiving Jesus himself. Jesus, who is the great comforter. My friends, Jesus promises eternal life to all who believe in him. With God's help, let us untie those burial bands that we sometimes wrap ourselves in, those burial bands that are wrapped around our wrists and around our feet, and move forward with our lives just as Lazarus did after Jesus restored him from the tomb. You know, we know our earthly death will not be an end, will not be the end. It's just day one of eternal life. So let us faithfully continue our journey toward the finish line. Let's keep doing what we're, what we're doing. Continue focusing on our Lord as we await the reunion of our souls and our bodies at the promised resurrection. And let us be comforted by our Lord who is who is the resurrection and the life. May God give us peace. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us offer these prayers to our God. That the one holy Catholic and apostolic church continue to proclaim the value of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations of the world know the love and peace of Jesus who wept for Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That those preparing for the Easter sacraments learn to die to self like Jesus in order to rise like Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who gather around this table reach out with love to those who grieve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women to be open to God's call to spread the good news of Jesus Christ as priests, deacons, or consecrated persons, especially Brooks Jensen and Dennis DeMeza, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need our prayers, especially the sick, those who care for them, those who serve our country and community, and all the intentions for which we have been asked to pray, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may enjoy the kingdom prepared for them, especially Patrick Smith, Joseph and Francesca Ernst, and Mary Pascioli, for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, number 654, O breathe on me, O breath of God, number 654.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for all of the Latin acclamations for Mass, if you'll use the white cards in your pews, and Marion will lead us in these acclamations for Mass. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards. Through Christ our Lord, through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Mortem tua, annunciamus Domine, et tuam resurrectionem Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Elizabeth, Benedict, Scholastica, John Paul II, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing our communion antiphon in the worship aid under fifth Sunday of Lent.
Let us pray. We pray, almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for just one moment. Deacon Ken is going to share a, share a very important message from Bishop Koenig to all the parishes of the diocese that was announced um, this past week. And before he does speak, to remind everyone that the Columbiettes are in the vestibule of the church with delicious quiches and homemade pies and for the work of their ministry and, and their charity. So please stop by their table to greet them and share some time in fellowship in the vestibule and on the steps of the portico of our church. Thank you, Father Roger. Yeah, the bishop uh, this past week uh, has made a decision that we're going to start a new class uh, for permanent deacons. So I'm a permanent deacon. Um, a new class will be starting up uh, actually next year. And uh, there's going to be information, there'll be information sessions that'll be, be conducted throughout the diocese uh, beginning uh, April 18th. All the dates, yes, two of them are, are local. I think St. John the Beloved and then also down at St. Margaret of Scotland uh, will have a, um, and at, at IHM, uh, we'll have information sessions. So if you want to want to attend those. Uh, the diaconate uh, program is a, uh, is a ministry uh, within, uh, with, within the church. Um, there are three levels of ordained clergy uh, in the church. Obviously at the top is, are the bishops and then the priests and then the, and then the deacons. Uh, so, so the deacons are, are members of the uh, our ordained clergy, uh, the only order of ordained clergy who can who can be married prior to prior to be being ordained. So, uh, which is which is a good thing. So, um, um, so the uh, the classes will be will be starting will be starting soon. Uh, the um, the the formation is a five year five year formation. Uh, first year of which is uh, what we call the discernment year, where if you believe that you're being called, you know, to the diaconate, it's during that year where you really have an opportunity to, through prayer and through, um, and, and th through prayer, to really to, to dive deeply into, into the call, just to make sure, to, to ensure that, that you're answering God's call, that you're being called to do this. Following the year of, of discernment, you know, there are four years of, of academics, you know, that, that follow uh, before, before ordination. So the, um, so the, the cohort that will start um, later this year, beginning of next year, would be ordained in the year 25, uh, 20, 2030, actually, uh, 20, 2029, I'm sorry. So, um, so it's a wonderful ministry, uh, ministry of service, so the deacons, you know, we serve at the altar, you know, we, we, we preach, uh, we, we preach the gospel, but most importantly, we're ministries, it's a ministry of service, you know, where we're servicing the people, the people of the church. It's the reason why we wear the Dalmatics. The Dalmatics is really a sign of, of a, it's a servant's garment. And that's the, that's the reason why we wear, wear Dalmatics, whereas uh, the, the Chasuble is a, uh, is, is, is a, uh, a, a, um, as a vestment, you know, for, for the priestly. Okay, so anyone who has any questions, you feel free to, uh, to see me after, after Mass. We will publish uh, the, the letter from the, di from the, uh, uh, from the bishop. Uh, I'm sure that'll be in the, in the dialogue, and we'll also have it uh, in the bulletin next week, as well as uh, uh, I'll post it out on our Facebook site. All right, so. Thank you. Please stand. Thank you, Deacon Ken, for sharing that message. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, number 130, From the Depths We Cry to Thee, number 130.